top of the morning. Now, every new day that breaks is another opportunity for us to come into your homes and start our mornings together. And it's the highlight of our day for us. It Excellent is. morning to you and welcome. It is, it is now. Another that's a, beautiful, yeah, beautiful. There's some things that we can blow out of proportion, but for yeah. this one, but you are the highlight mm. of my day. Welcome. Mm. This is another edition of Wake Up My Dear, the breakfast show that sets the pace. Yes, sir. Yeah in sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, uh, <laughs> let's go, let's go. Of course, of course. Now, not an easy fit, but we know that you deserve the very, very best that TV has to offer. My name is Titilayo Oyinson. I'm Mike Mesikeno, talking about fit. Uh, what? What? Somebody's well fitted in the kitchen. Ah, wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's well fitted yes, in the so. kitchen. Uh, she didn't she get is. the memo. She is, she don't is. Be. I didn't get one memo. Uh, Today's so Thursday, Thursday. you're yeah, looking like a... Uh, uh, Mike, yeah. I don't believe your scams anymore. So thank you and moving on. Mm -hmm. Hi, Titi. Good morning. Hey, how you Real doing? Real people here. <laughs> but you do look good, girl. That smile. Thank you mm -hmm. so much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Please keep it bright and beautiful. Time. My chest. Uh, wow. Hey. My chest. What? Uh, what of your belly? My chest. I say, wow, food. drink water, drink water. Please. I'll be okay, you, yeah? You, survive. <laughs> you better be okay, Mike. Of course. Uh, well, never doubt that a small group of people, of course, can make your morning this exciting. That is what we do. Yeah. You can cause change. I can cause change. We all together will cost the change that we need yes. everywhere of course and around the world yeah that's everything that we need mm. so you're never too insignificant to make a change in your world and just so you know you can stream this show live on tvc entertainment.tv and on facebook at tvc connect to comment with us use the hashtag wake up Nigeria on tvc facebook instagram twitter we'll mm -hmm. definitely get to see those comments and we can't wait to see them uh, our app remains available for you to download at no cost to you but it's just for android for ios any device you're using not to worry you can watch this show and many more great tvc shows from anywhere in the world a tvc entertainment on youtube that's our channel you can get to see segments and of course the full shows mm. yes sir. ig live exclusive mm. to instagram 2 30 pm yeah. fridays but now that's uh, you get to see another yes. side of us yes sir. more chilled more relaxed that's what apparently there's two people set for an interview tomorrow uh, two be. very amazing ladies mm. and i uh, can't wait for those particular interviews tomorrow wake definitely. up nigeria extra definitely mm. daily vulnerables to kick us up this morning today you don't has us covered on that one the yeah. christian bible and how it actually gives a, a fantastic uh, paradigm for cognitive journey. Now, uh, Jeanette Aditu will be with us this morning. We'll be talking etiquette and she'll be dishing out some much needed tips on how to curb bad habits, especially in public places. And then on mental health, we're picking up our conversation with Dr. Peter Ogunubi on optimizing your mental awareness, especially during this pandemic. On Tech today, we're continuing from our discussion from last week, talking about uh, productivity hacks for this time's Bella Rose is going to be with us this morning. And then we bring you our art segment in its most beautiful form. Now we have a conversation with and display of some of Emmanuel Umoran's collection of paintings. Beautiful, beautiful paintings. And on art, we have a book focus this week, A Broken People's Playlist by Chimeka Garrix. Mm. Mm, a Broken People's Playlist. That sounds so interesting. Wow. Uh, now, another discussion will be coming up. We'll be having that much later on in the show. We have Nengi Adoki, a leading you actress, writer, and producer. Looks like mm. a very romantic Give them scene. one more chance. Give them one more chance. Give me one more chance. That's what? a piece square word. Tuna. <laughs> so I noticed that in Hollywood now, if you if you want to do a lead role, if you want to be very sure of a lead role you want to do, you're, you're going to probably have to produce your own movie or series. Mm. Yes, if you want Most to be times. very sure uh, of your lead role. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, I saw, I saw yes. some young actors and I go to their pages and I'm like, oh, good, good, good. I'm seeing them in lead roles. And then I see produced by. Mm. I, it's a, it's For me, it's a double-edged sword. It's good. Uh, and it's I feel, I feel somehow like yeah. I feel like you know like um, when you are when when the the burden of production is on you mm -hmm. you understand it kind of um, places some kind of extra stress on you as 
a lead role to deliver. To deliver, yeah. I, 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 I tell you, you, you want to be in a particular space, at least for the small time I've been in there, yeah. you want to be in a particular kind of space mm -hmm. when you want to deliver. As mm -hmm. a producer, yeah. you are, uh, most of the times, even an executive producer, that means like the overall, everything just comes under you. It's always best if you're, if you're, if you're the executive producer, I mean, if you're bringing the money, yeah. it's best that you put someone to produce it mm. so that if mm. you're going to play the lead role, you can focus on yeah. acting because mm -hmm. if you want to handle production work mm -hmm. you're running up and down to make sure not say, ah, you have a scene you have a scene oh okay yeah. hey, what's my life what's my life oh okay yeah. let's yeah. do it and then you're not upset that it didn't get the the visibility you wanted it to get because you didn't give the delivery that was required mm -hmm. very true. so you still very miss true. out on the points of very producing true. your film very true. <laughs> so i, I very felt true. that way about uh, owners of magazines you know magazines are sort of going into obsolete now mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. everything is going online. online but back then to get on the cover of a magazine okay Wow, how are you going to do it? <laughs> so and then suddenly, <laughs> Oprah starts her own magazine and puts herself on the cover My every single edition. edition. Yeah. Yeah. Every, that's, that's some goals right there. So, yes, she uh, wanted to be on the cover of the magazine. I'll put myself, I'll put yeah. I'll every put myself. single edition. I'll put myself, true. I have a feeling I'm going to do something like that. <laughs> you know, you know, no, I, I, yeah, no. I like you, you brought out, you brought, you, you, mm -hmm. you, you, it was a home run for you. You brought it down when you said that thing. Now, look, man. And... <laughs> Maybe it's because of how the industry is, mm -hmm. because of uh, how the other producers will be acting mm -hmm. all of that. Yeah. But hey, come on, I, I feel I, I, it, 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 you, won't, you won't bring out your best. Your best. But you there's won't. nothing wrong with no. financing. Yeah. Well, if yeah. you want to produce it like finance and produce, then just give your lead role to someone else. But a lot of people feel like after I've saved money, mm. I'll now make you shine in my film. Which is what I'm talking about with the magazine. Because Imagine how much oh money she puts inside this, this magazine. This is, your, this is your magazine cover. coming out this weekend. I, it must be on the cover. I have a feeling. Uh -uh. The aim for the executive producer is money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then for the lead role, the aim is maybe I want to put myself out. And mo most of the time, when they crisscross, yeah. they don't go so well. Because you are thinking of using yourself where you might not pay the best option as an executive producer. You should be yeah. thinking about the, uh, the, 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 the financial, the financial be you know, yeah. benefits of that. But then, as you know, so it's, it's conflicted it's roles. It can be hard. But you know, another, way you, do, another way you can play it is if it's as a hard. male and female lead. Let mm. your male be mm. a bigger person, bigger, mm. bigger than you in the industry. Mm. That's a commercial bigger. Okay. So that way he sells it. Wow. But so I when are you going to produce your. Uh, yeah, I won't give you a role, don't worry. Now, this I won't <laughs> give you security. Well, Tokma is about to take the news <laughs> update yes. at this point. Yes, the Federal Executive Council has approved the establishment of a Nigerian Youth Investment Fund for 75 billion naira. The Youth Bank is mainly to support youth enterprise among Nigeria's 6 to 8 million youth between ages of 18 and 35. This formed part of decisions reached at this week's Federal Executive Council meeting. Tai Amodu reports. Over eight hours were spent at this virtual meeting, presided over by President Muhammad Buhari, which had seven ministers physically present in the council chambers. Youth entrepreneurship was its major focus, targeting an age group with a population of over 68 million. Council at the end of the day approved the establishment of a 75 billion naira Nigerian youth investment fund. This fund is meant to create a special window for Nigerian youths to access credit facilities and financing. Youths within the age group of 18 to 35 with genuine business ideas are to pitch their ideas in any of the 125 microcredit banks across the country, and qualified candidates will have access to funds. The best way to call it is that for the first time, the country will have a youth bank a fund that will cater specifically for our youth within the stipulated age band. It's going to be between 18 and 35 years. Council also approved that the Ministry of Youth and Sports Development would drive the process in terms of legislation and organization. The Federal Seeking Ministry of Council's Finance, approval. Budget and National Planning well, will take the lead when it comes to the aspect of financing. Working with the Central Bank of Nigeria, the Ministry of Youth and Sports Development, and other relevant ministries, departments, and agencies. Tai Amudu, TVC News, Abuja. In a bid to contain armed banditry and all forms of criminalities in the country, the Nigerian Air Force says it has killed several bandits at Kagara in Zamfara State. 
This was contained in a release by the coordinator of defense media operations, Major General John Eneche. General Eneche said the mission was conducted based on intelligence reports indicating heavy presence of the armed bandits, along with the large number of rustled livestock in a portion of the forest. Some of the bandits who attempted to escape camouflaging in between the livestock were taken out in a follow-on attack. A few minutes after a video showing the execution of five aid workers by suspected Boko Haram fighters, President Muhammadu Buhari has condemned the act. President Muhammadu Buhari sympathizes with the families of five aid workers, praying that God will comfort them for their irreplaceable loss. He also assured the perpetrators of the atrocity that they will be faced, they will be made to face the law. He assures Nigerians that his government will continue to do all it can to ensure that every remaining vestige of Boko Haram is wiped out completely from northeastern Nigeria. Suspected Boko Haram terrorists have killed five aid workers held in their custody. The workers were abducted by the terrorists from different locations within the northeast while official duties were on. The abducted workers have spent a month with their abductors before their execution on Wednesday. In Kaduna State now, the police in Kaduna State have arrested 217 suspected kidnappers, armed bandits, robbers, and cattle rustlers. Among them, Stephen Anaya, who's, who was killed at the age of 15. The father says the suspected abductors also robbed him of 1.5 million naira. He is pained and wants justice served. Correspondent Tessem Akende reports. It's a review of the security situation in Kaduna State between April and July this year. Police personnel are said to have recorded several fates against enemies of peace during the period. They've recovered guns, among them seven AK-47 rifles, pistols, 22 locally made Dane guns, two double-barrel Russian-made guns, among others. But more worrisome is the story of a 15-year-old boy, Stephen Onya. He was said to have been kidnapped in Goningora area of the state capital, killed, and his body thrown in a well. The father says his body was discovered after he notified the police. Yeah, we didn't know that they had even killed my son before making the man. So we paid them, paid them 1.5 million, and they were demanding for more. And my heart bleeds that they killed my son in such a gruesome manner. A young boy of 15 years they killed him and, and inserted him into the world. The suspects and many others are here and will be taken to court soon. Father of the murdered teenager says he hopes justice will be served. He says they are really in pain as a family. Tessem Akende, TVC News, Kaduna. The United Arab Emirates has ordered Nigerians with expired visas to leave the country on or before the 17th of August. Nigerian Embassy in Abu Dhabi confirms this in a statement on Tuesday. UAE has granted waivers on fines and penalties on visas that expired before the 1st of March. The embassy urged affected citizens to submit their papers for immigration processing. It says Nigerians are advised to join the evacuation flights arranged from the country before the deadline. UAE says the development is unconnected to the negative reports about Nigerians in the country. Well, that's it on news update for this hour. Let's take a break, and when we return, we have. Uh, and as we always do at this point, we take the headlines in the papers. I have the Punch newspaper with me here, and it says 774,000 jobs. Kayamo will supervise recruitment. Labor Ministry replies National Assembly. NDE must report to Minister of State, says Ministry spokesman. A 52 billion naira public works fund for NDE, not Ministry. Senate insists. At the top of the page there, man, LCCI decry inaccessible 50 billion naira COVID-19 loan. On the NDDC probe, National Assembly passes verdict on Aquabio. Others today, it's deceitful blaming Southern Kaduna killings on politics, say the Middle Belt uh, Forum and Sokapu. Fayami tests positive 
uh, wife, commissioners, others undergo uh, COVID-19 tests. And in the photo story there, you can see the scenes of a crash in Ota Ogun State on Wednesday. Uh, looks like more than three vehicles, uh, big, long vehicles involved there. And uh, it must have been a lot of havoc, havoc on that road. Uh, it also says here, Jegede wins Undo PDP ticket battles at Kiridolu in October poll. And I'll wrap with this. It says, Nigerian entrepreneur shot self over rape allegation, according to U.S. police. Pol uh, family seeks end to false accusations. That's what we have on the cover of The Punch. Moving to the cover of The Nation this morning, we have tenants now to pay 6% stamp duty, says FIRS. Edo 2020, Oshomole's entry into Edo demoralizes PDP members. PDP, governor rescued states from huge debts. Abbas Akim is leading Edo people to get votes, says group. There's a photo story here showing um, robbery suspects, kidnappers, car and motorcycle syndicates during their parade in Kaduna yesterday. Um, we also have reps demand evidence of $11 billion withdrawal from ECA. Controversial power sector funding returns to the front burner. At the bottom of the paper, we have five humanitarian workers executed by Boko Haram in Borno. Moving to the top, we have COVID-19. Fire me goes into isolation. Wife aids for test. Jagada wins under PDP ticket. Deputy governor loses out. Oyo to issue 10 billion naira bond for road projects. And finally, Magu to open defense before panel today. You can read this and more in the Nation newspaper for today. I have the Guardian newspaper today, uh, and it says, construction costs rise on forex imbalance logistics. Uh, 2.8 trillion naira spent yearly on imported inputs. Experts blame forest, forex fluctuation, low local input, unclear procurement process for heavy construction costs. Now that starts on the cover and wraps up on page six. Uh, it also says here there's fresh concern over $1.3 billion Malibu oil deal as prosecutor considers jail terms. 20 feared dead as tanker, explosion, uh, tanker explodes on Binisapele Highway. More VIPs violate safety security protocols at the airport on the business pages. You'll see more on that. And the race for 2023 tears PDP apart in Cross River. Uh, this is the final one here. Can knocks federal government on Kaduna killings, accuses presidency of complicity and fact twisting. That's what we have on the cover of The Guardian. Moving to the cover of Nigerian Tribune this morning, we have power sector spending. 13 years after, reps question $11 billion withdrawn from excess crude account. Senate to review power contracts to save $1.2 billion fine from foreign reserve. Many killed as tanker explodes in Delta. Fire me test positive for COVID-19, delegates powers to deputy. Wife exco members aides go for test. IG orders investigation into viral video of SARS dehumanizing lady in Ibado. A photo story showing members of, cent of the Center of Advancement of Civil Liberties and Development during a rally to showcase the people's resolution on the social media bill and digital freedom in Nigeria. At the bottom of the paper, we have reps seek review of 13% derivation fund from natural resources to 50%. $1.3 billion Nigeria oil field purchase. Italy prosecutors seek jail term for Shell and ENI executives. And to the top of the paper, Ingi Gay to Faleke, I am your Lagos mentor's mate. You mushing boy talking to me. A VI boy, you yap me, I yap you. You can read that on page eight. Boko Haram kills five aid workers in Borno. And finally, Africa records over 15,000 COVID-19 deaths, says WHO. And that's it on the cover of Nigerian uh, Tribune. I feel like completing that statement. You, you yap, yap me, I, I yap, yap you, you 10 times. Oh, okay. That was what he said. <laughs> oh, that's what he said. <laughs> yeah, that was what he said. Uh, we have to wrap it up on the headlines in the dailies at this point. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's still much, much more coming up on Wake Up Nigeria.
Testy times might be ahead for road users in Lagos as renovation commences on the third mainland bridge tomorrow. But the Lagos state government is sparing no avenue to cushion the effects of the closure of one of the most used bridges in Africa. But today, let's help you get to your destination faster and easier with tips. As, al as always, we encourage that you share useful information you may have on all our social media platforms using the hashtag WakeUpNigeria on TVC. This morning, I'll be starting my journey from Abulegba to Ikeja. Now, from what I'm seeing here, it should take you 38 minutes. Now, if you're going to come through um, the through the old Abel Kuta Road, that will take you 53 minutes. So you just use my direction and save like, what, 20, 24 minutes? Okay, so starting from Ekoro Road by Pipeline Bus Stop. It's free at this point, but when you connect to Ekoro Road, the traffic begins to pick up ar at, around the mobile filling station and connecting now to old Abel Kuta Road, the road is free. Now, from this point, you have the experience, no traffic all the way through um, Okwaba New Mosque, um, that's Okwaba Axis, there's no traffic, but once you start to connect to the NNPC Pipeline Road, there's traffic there, not sure what's going on, there's a lot of traffic there, but the traffic eases up at about um, where they have the Mamakas, that's like a landmark, very popular at that axis, but the traffic picks up again at Idera Market, that's around the Adidoja shopping complex, and now the traffic is thick at that point, not sure what's going on. If you live around that axis, please help us. That's where the crossing railway is, crossing, they call it crossing. <laughs> there's thick traffic at that point. Now the traffic eases up, but there's still traffic, so just slow movements at about where the Providence Heights Secondary School is. If you live around this axis, you might be familiar with the landmarks I'm calling. Now that's approaching Iju. Now as you enter Iju proper, the traffic eases up, and then you have free flowing all through the police station, all through the banks, all through the rentals, if I call international school, is free flowing at this point. So if you're around that axis and you want to head out, you might just head out now. Connecting to um, Iju Road proper, the traffic picks up again, but gets better at Penn Cinema. Now, surprisingly, Penn Cinema is free. Connecting to Oba Akran, Guinness, free. But right after Guinness, around the... Um, Around uh, Aiko, there's slight traffic there, but from Bega, Bega Paints, it's free flowing all the way through to all the way through to Alade Shopping, um, Shopping Mall. That's Allen Axis, free flowing. So if you're around that axis, you know what the road's looking like. Uh, Titi and Mike, any updates for me? <coughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah. Uh, we'll do. Time is up, really. We'll talk about yeah. you know what, yeah, let me join you. Yeah. Let me join you guys. What's up right. and about in Lagos? That's all we're taking right. for traffic this morning. Yeah, so um, for, for those that are maybe just tuning in for the first time this week, we, uh, well, this month, we've been talking about mental health throughout the month. Uh, we even have a doctor coming in to talk a bit about it today. Uh, and people have sort of, you know, it, it, there's this stigma around having mental health challenges um, for obvious reasons, but I also think it's about it's more about ignorance than anything else. Uh, so the word bipolar dis disorder has been coming up for the past few days because of one person, Kanye West. We talked about him day before yesterday, talked about him again yesterday, but I just wanted to you know, go through um, what I found online about what it means to be bipolar. Um, and it says here, um, it could include manic episodes, high energy, um, Depressive episodes such as low motivation, loss of interest in daily activities, but then also mood swings and mood episodes that could last for days to months at a time and could be associated with suicidal thoughts. So that breaks down. That's, that's, that's a lot of us. Yeah. It's, yeah. At different well, times. Uh, different times, <laughs> different so, times meaning what? check the analysis so, of bipolar disorder, it's yeah. not all of us. Uh, no, I mean, it's what you said now, obvious. for mm. this one, for yeah. um, loss of motivation at different times, yeah. you know, there are some, um, they, are, they, are, they are a bit more, um, should mm. I say more, uh, there, there are some symptoms that are a bit more uh, extreme. Mm. 
when it comes to bipolar disorder, mm -hmm. you understand when it comes or what is called bipolar disorder. Yeah, it seems yeah. like at times it's two different people. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where the whole bipolar thing comes out. Yeah. Both people are on extreme ends of each other. Exactly. You know, exactly. this is basically yeah. a awesome time share, but I get it. Um, so they say it's, it can last for years or be lifelong. Um, treatment can help, but the condition can't be cured. I want to put yeah. that out there. It's not something that has an actual cure. That's, that's as far as uh, those as people far know. As, as far, no, uh, come yeah. on, this is WebMD now. Yeah, that's a, no, that's as far as they know. It's just, we, we, we have a God. No, but, but that's... But, I'm just saying. But really, no, it's not about you. Okay. That's as far as they know. <laughs> mm. And that's, that's you have to understand that at every point in time, humanity has always pre, uh, gone for that past its predecessors. Mm. That's as far as they True. know. That's True. as far as they say. True. So and there's nothing wrong with what they know. But the point is that a lot of people have passed phases like that. A lot of people have conquered a lot. So we're hoping as Kanye as can know. conquer this matter because yesterday his wife came out to say uh, she came out with a statement after all the things he had posted and tweeted, uh, exposing their family to all sorts of you know different comments and criticism. Um, and she talks about the fact that he has bipolar disorder, and anyone who has this or has a loved one in their life who does have this knows how incredibly complicated and painful it is. So now she, she says quite a lot. I can't read the whole thing out. But I'm wondering what your opinion is. Should she have come out to say anything at all or should she have just kept quiet about it? So I think it was um, good that she mm -hmm. came out because mm -hmm. it's not like she was attacking her husband or mm -hmm. defending what he did. Mm -hmm. She was just pretty much giving us basic information that we need to know. Mm -hmm. I mean, she didn't tell us anything more than what was necessary from mm -hmm. what I analyzed from me it was just be pretty much okay my husband is doing abc and d and mm. this is why so mm. whatever it is that's going on we should not take his actions or we should not judge him by, by his, his actions. actions and i think to be very honest for mm. kim kardashian mm. west mm. i was really impressed i mean mm. i saw people said it was publicity stunts it was pr it was mm. whatever it was mm. it made me have a tiny weeny soft spot for her to yeah. feel like oh okay, yeah my heart goes out to you. I mean, beyond the reality show star, yeah. she is dealing with real life issues and she's handling it in a very mature way. Okay, so um, that's if she's the one that actually typed it herself as and said, it's not her PR team that typed it. Does it matter? Whatever it is, she's well, dealing with it. Whether her team or her, mm. it was yeah. from her, it doesn't so matter. So the who thing is, it. the head of her team is the person under most of the fire here, and that's Chris Jenner. So him talking about Chris Jenner, his mother in law, calling her Chris John Un, it says a lot and it's powerful. So, so it, does it feel like she's taking back control over the situation? I feel yes, like... Yes, that's how it feels to me. No, I don't I know. I feel like I don't it's know. still... Now, with, your, with the mm. proper analysis, if you do read up about bipolar mm. disorder, you mm. could also trace it to mm. the extreme of the other side, the extreme of the aggression, the extreme of the um, mm. the activity, because I did read about it, and mm. then I had a roommate in uni mm. that had a bipolar disorder. Wow. And when wow. they start to slow down on taking their meds, mm. and they are, um, they go for this psychotherapy mm. thing, they, mm. now when they slow down on that, it just, a very little thing can trigger mm. their reaction. So I was thinking, I mean, it's just my analysis, yeah. maybe the whole pandemic, the okay. Black Lives Matter, something must have triggered it. Mm. So it might not be, because to be honest, I feel Chris is a great mom, mm. like a great mom in the mm. business mm. way. Look at the way she's analyzed. She's done all her kids' careers. Man, mm. if she was my manager, yo. Yeah, but <laughs> from time, from time, media moms, moms of, of bright stars, look at um, Michael Jackson's parents, look at, you know, I'm just saying, look at Beyonce's parents. These guys, these media moguls, especially the women, they didn't get there by being nice. They didn't get there by being soft. Mm -hmm. There are some hard decisions they would have had to make because of the business, to make sure the business thrives. So I'm saying she might not always be in the right in some of her decisions. Okay. Uh, and him, as a, being a black man, in quote, probably wanted to take over, take control of the situation. So, in his own way, you know, I, f I felt like some of the things he said, you know, he had, he had the right to his opinion. But um, okay. maybe, maybe because he is bipolar, you know, we can always push it towards so his that? mental state. Mm. So, I, uh, mm. well, for, um, he has said a lot of things, and these are things that have gone on for years. It's not, this is not just an episode, like maybe something happened and he just read out. He said mm -hmm. things that have, you know, he said, um, mm. he has things that for two years, said he, yeah. he had tried, uh, 
he accused his wife of uh, being with McMill or mm. something. He said many things and all of that. Yeah. He said when he thinks of himself, he thinks of Get Out, that movie. Mm. Yeah. He's, he's married into a white family yeah. and he's a black man. If you watch the movie, it was about the consciousness of a, of a white person being trying to put into a black man. Mm. He said quite a lot, but well, um, can you, you'll be all right, man. You'll be fine. My God's great. You'll be just, fine. You are, no, uh, this is right, deep, though. I'd like to visit Nigeria, Shah. <laughs> if you come. Boya, I said, said it's worth $5 you know? billion. Dollars. Nice one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Us, you know, your Whatever brain, is happening. Amala, your brain just... Get well soon, Kanye. If that is the case, get yeah. well soon. We have to take a quick break. Uh, Wake Up Nigeria continues with birthday shout outs in a bit. about the Christian Bible and how it actually gives a, a fantastic uh, paradigm for cognitive journaling. Cognitive journaling is the idea of identifying your emotion, expressing your emotion, and moving forward. And I was thinking about three Bible verses. One is, be angry but do not sin. You know, it's the idea of identify the emotion, express it, then move on from it. Or do not mourn like those who have no... So he says, be angry. Know that you're angry. Be angry, but don't be angry to the extent that it becomes a problem. Or do not mourn like those who have no hope. M mourn when you, are, when you are sad. Mourn. But after you mourn, do not take the mourning to a level where it is now counterproductive. Or that other one, I think in Ecclesiastes, um, do not overwork yourself for money for your own sake, seize. The idea is, you need money, yes, work, but don't overwork, you know? And it's that idea of whatever you are doing, be mindful, be conscious, be deliberate, and have boundaries. Have boundaries around your grief. Have boundaries around your anger. Have boundaries around your hustle. Um, I, I think it's an important lesson for us to remember. People think that, so people say, you should be angry, you should be sad, you should, you should, be, you should be confused, you should be um, um, disappointed, express it, engage it. But know when a negative emotion has lived and outlived its usefulness for your own sake. It's yeah. the 23rd day of July 2020 and this morning is definitely shaping up wonderfully beautifully well for us yeah. and uh, we definitely hope it is the same for you as well. Indeed, the right start is essential to a great day and they say joy cometh in the morning. Mm. So, it's safe to say, the joy lives right here. Now, of course, we love <laughs> nothing better than sharing it with you. A very, very good morning to you once again. It's great to have you on your new Mero Uno Breakfast Show, Wake Up Nigeria. It's the Thursday edition, and we have almost too much for you this morning. Uh, the suggestion is simple. Just grab that cup of coffee or hot beverage and just sit tight. <laughs> so you can experience it. My name is Titi Laya Oyinson. Mike Mesikeno is mine. You can stream online if you have to go out to tvcentertainment.tv and Facebook, it's at TVC Connect. Mm. The TVC app remains available for you to download free of charge for both Android and iOS. It allows you to watch us from anywhere in the world. And then also YouTube, that's where you can get our videos, segments, also the full shows. TVC Entertainment, that's the handle, subscribe and uh, click uh, the notification icon so that you can always yeah. be uh, notified whenever new videos drop. Now, when it comes to being live every day during the week, don't forget we're also live on Fridays at 2.30 p.m. for a little something extra. Yep, it's Just us. Be. Yeah, on a relaxed and chill mode. Okay, mm -hmm. so Tokma, you want to tell us uh, what we have, what you have up for us this morning in the kitchen? Yes, yeah, so. I have a one and only chef, Natito! <laughs> po, 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 po. And guess what? It's another planting experience. Uh, I think we're going to have like planting experience series with Natito Chris. They should endorse me, Natito. They should endorse me. Plantain should endorse you. Yeah. Like farmers should endorse you. <laughs> Plantain do you? Oh my God, <laughs> I can't help you. <laughs> Chef Natido is always on point there whenever he's here with us and we always look forward to having him. All right, so Plantain, let's, let's, see, let's see what he has in store for us. Okay? Now, for so. me, Plantain is like having a good habit. 
but there are some bad habits that some people have, right? That's why we need the Don't etiquette need queen, the one and only Janet Adetu, talking to us about uh, breaking those bad habits, how to curb habits, bad habits, especially in public places. Thank you. We have our conversation with Dr. Olusheon Peters. Of course, it's mental health. Uh, it's the awareness month, and we're talking about optimizing your mental awareness during this pandemic. That's a labyrinth there. And on tech, Bella Rose Okoje is going to be back to continue the discussion she started last week. How to get work done more efficiently with productivity hacks for these times. Now, um, we also have uh, Art uh, Thursday, and uh, well, he'll be displaying his collection of paintings. Emmanuel O'Moran He's a man with an uncanny ability to bring brand ideas to life. Uh, I love this. I love this. I Beautiful love this paintings there. Beautiful. I love this one. I love that style. And today's book chat this week will be focusing on Chimeka Garrick's book, A Broken People's Playlist. Mm -hmm find that title very intriguing. Just because of that title, I feel like reading it already. Hmm. <laughs> mm. 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 I find it really mm. like, mm. like I find it hot or very hot. And then of course, uh, actress, writer, and producer Nengi Adoki will be with us. Uh, we'll be talking to her, what it means to wear uh, that triple hat and how she does it. <laughs> well, at that moment, I'm nobody. I'll, nah. I'll, I'll tackle her. You or whoever, they just tackle her, really. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, there's, a, there's a while back, mm. this show I used mm. to be with some of my friends, and uh, we, we spoke about this thing. We said, and we, we mentioned, you made it fact, that, look, a lot of times you don't know what you will do until, until you're in you are in a particular situation. Yeah, I know. Don't worry. I won't. I will collect it. <laughs> <laughs> I will go. I no, was, you don't know. Simple analysis. <laughs> Were you not on your own? Did they not come and meet you and give you money? Ah, you say it covered with the blood of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but there's somebody that I know is very sure of what he's about to do. Yeah, even though we expected I him a little bit earlier. I want to speak but on Ibrahim, him, but I can't. He's here, Ibrahim. I know you're very sure about what you want to do now. Are I'm you very sure. The <laughs> <laughs> I'm the president of Nigeria in my mind. Okay, wow. <laughs> okay. All right. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control reported 543 new cases of coronavirus overnight, taking the country's total number of cases to 38,344. Lagos recorded the highest number of new cases with 180, followed by Abuja with 86 new cases. Other states with high figures are Kaduna and Edo with 56 and 47 cases respectively. Bochi and Abia recorded the lowest number of new infections so far, 15,815 people have been discharged, while 813 people have died from COVID-19-related complications. And President Muhammad Buhari will depart for Bamako, Republic of Mali, on a one-day visit. This will be the president's first trip out of the country after Nigeria recorded its first COVID-19 case on February the 27th. In a statement on Wednesday, Special Advisor to the President of Media and Publicity, Femi Adishino, said a trip to Mali follows the briefing of former President Gilok Jonathan, who is a special envoy to, of the Economic Community of West African States to Mali. Mr. Gilok Jonathan was appointed by the ECOWAS to lead its mediation team to help resolve the socio-political crisis in Mali. The former President had visited President Muhammad Buhari on Tuesday to brief him, uh, brief him on his activities in Mali. There is currently an uprising against President Ibrahim Bubaka Keita of Mali, who has spent two out of five years of his second term in office. And in a bid to contain armed banditry and all forms of criminalities in the country, the Nigerian Air Force says it has killed several bandits at Skagara in Zamfara State. This was contained in a release by the Coordinator of Defense Media Operations, Major General Johnny Neche. General Neche said the mission was conducted based on intelligence reports indicating heavy presence of the armed bandits along with a large number of rustled livestock in a portion of the forest. Some of the bandits who attempted to escape camouflaging in between the livestock 
were taken out in follow-on attacks. And few minutes after a video showing the execution of five aid workers by suspected Boko Haram fighters, President Muhammad Buhari has condemned the act. He, uh, he sympathizes with the families of the five aid workers, praying that God will comfort them for their irreplaceable laws. He also assured that the perpetrators of the atrocity will be made to face the law. He assures Nigerians that his government will continue to do all it can to ensure that every remaining vestige of Boko Haram is wiped out completely from northeastern Nigeria. Suspected Boko Haram terrorists have killed five aid workers held in their custody. The workers were abducted by the terrorists from different locations within the northeast while on official duties. The abducted workers have spent a month with their abductors before their execution on Wednesday. And the call for the immediate dismissal of the country's service chiefs of growing, is growing louder as the country continues to battle with security challenges. Lawmakers are even more concerned by the series of attacks on the country's gallant troops, which they believe has caused a loss of morale among troops fighting at the front lines. Only recently, 365 soldiers registered the laws of interest in the service, which senators consider as a setback in winning the fight against insurgency. The Senate will emphasize the need for a fresh approach in addressing the country's security concerns and believe a change of the country's service chiefs is a step in the right direction. And the United Arab Emirates has ordered Nigerians which, uh, with expired visas to leave the country on or before August the 17th. Nigerian Embassy in Abu Dhabi confirms this in a statement on Tuesday. UAE has granted waivers and fines and penalties on visas that expired uh, before March the 1st. The embassy urged affected citizens to submit their papers for immigration processing. It says Nigerians are advised to join the evacuation flight arranged for the country or from the country before the deadline. UAE says the development is unconnected to the negative reports about Nigerians in the country. And that's the news update for this hour. session with Big Harry. So today we're just going to work on our heart rate. I'll show you simple basic steps you can do at home anywhere. So watch my cone and watch my moves. Alright? So we're increasing our heart rate today. Okay. Make sure you're enjoying it. So the next one is your jumping jacks. I'm going back and I'm making the move. You give me 10, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Two sets each. Okay? You're going back and forth. That's two sets. All right. You can see my heart rate is already increasing. Yeah. That's right. Make sure your arms are going all the way up. All right. So the next one, I'm going free squats. You take a position from here, you go down. You sit. All right. You're giving me 10 reps. Okay. Let's go. You go again. Take your position. All right. Enjoy it. It's your workout. If it's a certain competition, I think I'm going to win. All right. You go back. Take the same position. Go. Let's go. Let's go. Enjoy it. And engage your arms. And the last one. Take your position again. Yeah. Let's go. And one more. All right. So now we go back there and we are starting push-ups. Take your position. You go down. These are the regular push-ups, you know. 
Everybody can do this. Yeah. Up. Go down again. Yeah. Up. Go down. And the last one. Yeah, this is how you accomplish cardio workouts. As you can see, I'm breathing. So this means my heart rate has increased. So if you're able to accomplish this before going out, I mean you're good for the day. So see you next time, same station, you know? Welcome to the kitchen, people. I have Chef Natido, you see? Yeah, we used to get my energy. Ooh, oh, oh, oh. get it. Five and six. Where is our, okay, so this is our plantain. <laughs> Very little plantain yeah, today. Yeah, just little. Just little. It's just not the main. It's not the main. Yeah. Okay, okay. So we have Chef Natudo from Nathaniel, sorry, from Natido Cuisine. Yep. I hope people have been sending in your orders. Yo, <laughs> I hope you've been sending in your orders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but this morning, what are we going to be making? So we're going to be making bruschetta. Hey, yeah, come. Which yeah. country are we going to? It's a kind of Italian dish. But well, we came back to Nigeria last yes. week. Now, what so, You wanted to travel. You know, the idea um, moving the lockdown restrictions. So yeah, so you just feel like you want to travel. Exactly. All right. So that's the major reason why we have this. this. What kind of bread is this? It's baguette or French loaf. Okay, baguette or French yeah. loaf. So when you go to Paris, this is the kind of bread they'll serve you. Exactly. So what what, what does it have that we don't have in our bread? Well. Or what does it do, What doesn't it have that we have? Texture, size. Yeah. You at least see this kind of bread in Nigeria. But, I mean, is our aggregate bread like this? No, uh, it's not. It's not strong. It's strong. Yeah. So why is it strong? What they put in it? Uh, it's just the kind of um, what is actually flour. Yeah, flour oh, okay. Yes, sir. But just... we aggregate lovers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> aggregate bread lovers, to be specific. Okay, so we're making bras bruschetta. Bite, bite bruschetta. Bread. Okay, bruschetta. Yeah. Okay, okay. So and we have. Um, we have chicken. Chicken. We have basil. Basil, okay. Plantain, plantain vegetable, vegetable oil, oil, bell peppers, bell peppers garlic, onions. tomatoes, okay. egg, and, and spices. spices. Yeah. All right. We'll so let's bread. get to it. So we'll what start we first? with, because I'm going to shred the chicken. Oh, okay, okay. So we're going to spice it up. So just some spices. Okay, so are we marinating this for no, a I'm bit? Just Okay, you know what, we're going to stick to um, spicing this and get into the preparations. Uh, but we're going to go on a break. When we come back, uh, Titi is going to be having a very interesting interview. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. Wake Up Nigeria continues with our etiquette segment. Now, this is very key for quite a lot of people. Now, if you want to work on becoming a posher, more polished version of yourself, look no further than our guest this morning, fondly called the queen of etiquette, Janet Adetu. She is the CEO of JSK Consulting, and she's about to give us some tips on curbing habits, bad habits, especially in public places. You're welcome back to the show, ma'am. Thank you so much, Titi. I really appreciate that. Honestly, what can I say today? There are so many bad habits out there. Mm. And I'm just going to quickly go through them. The first one I'm going to say that we see today is right in our faces. People are just not wearing their masks. And that's a bad habit. Mm. Because today, it's all about safety. And, um, you know, it's a habit and it's happening right now in public places so please wear your mask for safety for your own safety and for the safety of people around you so that's the first one i really wanted to mention okay. but ones that we see every day that you know to be honest we just don't like them for me top of the list is spitting 
spitting in mm. public places anywhere mm. anyhow you know some people just you might be walking behind someone before you know it they're spitting and you're wondering why are they spitting so spitting means you must you must really have tissue in your hand uh, and spitting means you should do it really in discreet places there are some countries where if you do spitting on the floor you can be fined so mm. it's really you know making sure that you're in a discreet place you have tissue and probably in a washroom is a safer place to do something like that mm. another thing we see is nose picking some people even pick their nose right in the middle of a discussion with other people and they're not really aware of themselves but um again too it's about having some kind of handkerchief some kind of tissue in your hand those are things that are discreet they're not even pleasing to the eye so mm. we really want you to go to a washroom or a discreet place if indeed you feel tempted to pick your nose at all. Sneezing, again, is something, I know it's spontaneous, but a lot of people just sneeze anyhow, anywhere. And the worst of all is a lot of people sneeze into their eyes. And that is one that like, mm, you know, it's, it's as simple as sneezing into a tissue, a handkerchief, or right now, if you don't have any of those in your hand, just sneeze right into your elbow, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, again, we also see people talking with their mouth full. Mm. And when it comes to talking with your mouth full, please, it, the tendency is that you spit food into people's faces. And it's not even a nice sight to talk and people can see what's in your mouth. That's so one that as, really gets me. That particular one really, really gets me. And, and I think it's as simple as take bite-sized pieces of food first. Don't make your mouth full. And of course, if you have to talk, even if somebody asks you a question, question and you feel prompted to speak just finish whatever is in your mouth first it's as simple as that it's for you know it's even courtesy you know um at that point in time especially if you're talking among a list of people or you're talking in a very important meeting make sure you finish everything in your mouth first another thing we see quite a lot unfortunately i probably have to say this is scratching of the crutch and scratching of the arm oh my goodness you went there you habits. went there oh no <laughs> You know, some people, they are habits, they are not pleasing to the eye to see, they are not polite in any way. So you need to seize that habit. It's a habit that you, it's one of those habits that you must stop doing, especially in a public place, you know. Um, mm. We don't want to see that at all. Whether it's an armpit, wherever it is, we don't want to see that scratching at all. It's something that you really must stop. Another thing is where some people actually shout on the phone and they have their conversation for the whole public to hear. Now, no matter what you're talking about, keep your conversations confidential and to you and the person on the other end only. We don't need to hear your conversation. Um, and again, to sometimes you're talking about something that's really, really important that other people should not hear. And if you get into the habit of talking so loud on the phone, you might not be wary of what people are listening to and when people are listening. So keep your conversations to yourself. It's like, I, I am so pleased you're mentioning all these uh, very, very key uh, habits there. The spitting one happens a lot, even in moving vehicles. Some people spit out the window. That has to stop. Uh, the picking of the nose thing, I've, I've observed, uh, I found an article on that where uh, it says, if you clean your nose at the same time you're brushing your teeth in the morning, uh, actually uh, purposefully clean it out, there's less need to pick at it later on in the day yeah. i read that somewhere yeah. uh also <laughs> having, having a face mask cars. very very important as well um madam janet as always it's always a pleasure having you on the show with us Thank you. let me just remind people not to please talk on your phone or text on your phone while driving that's mm. very very uh serious habits that one piece people just need to you know and mm. of course no peeing in public <laughs> if we say that you went there again <laughs> we can go on. the peeing in public places on is a no-no uh thank you so much for sharing uh now if you know you have one or all those bad habits just know stop stop it you heard it here stop it from now on we're going to be heading back to the kitchen now Tokwe, it's all yours. Thank you so much, Titi. I hope people stop bad habits because there's so many of them that were lined up there. But we're back here. Um, Chef Nathaniel has uh, marinated the chicken and we're going to fry it now. Yes. So how come, why didn't we leave it for a bit? You know, you usually leave it for like 10 minutes. Mm, just for 
because it is um, tiny. Okay. So I don't think it's the big one. You need oh, okay, everything. So we've got already cut it. So we don't want it to be too spicy. Spicy, okay. So, so can you use any part of the chicken, not necessarily bread, because this is not chicken breast. Yes, it's so not. So you can use so you any can, part. Yeah, although you should not use the one that there's too much bone. fat, bone, bone fat, or okay. skin. Okay. So it's just more of the flesh that you Okay. Okay. All right. Yes. So after we do this, we're, we're going to let me guess. We're going to lace it with egg. Yes. And then breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs. Okay. Okay. So, so as to add a kind of coating. Coating. So why 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 aren't we using flour today? Uh, I choose to use breadcrumbs. Use breadcrumbs, but you could use flour. Yes. So that means if we're going to use flour, and we can also use biscuits. The way I did it. The way you did it the last time. Okay, so you brought actual breadcrumbs this time, yes, not, biscuit. not biscuit. In case breadcrumbs. you missed the last time Chef Nathaniel um, used biscuit to coat chicken, you might want to catch up on that on our YouTube channel, TVC Entertainment. Uh, just check for the kitchen segment that had Chef Nathaniel, and you'll see how he actually used biscuit to, um, it, it, to replace breadcrumbs. They are really amazing ways he makes his food. So if you're at home and you want to coat your chicken and you don't have um, bread, bread crumbs, you have biscuits, you could just, you know, I won't tell you what, what to do. <laughs> Go and catch up on YouTube and find out for yourself. So this bird, the bell peppers and yeah. the um, basil leaf yeah. is going to add more color. To it. Okay. Like this kind of break, breakfast is mm -hmm. just a layering kind of breakfast. breakfast so it's not okay. like you are putting it's not like something. A burger kind yeah, it's of not thing. like a burger. So you just so it depends. The actual um, ingredient is the tomato. Okay. Tomatoes okay. and this. This. Yes. I'm so waiting to see how this can, comes out. That's why I brought plantain okay. just to give it different. You always bring plantain. Yeah, because, <laughs> most, of, because most, most of the food that I prepare are not common to Nigerians. Nigerians so yeah. just to... To bring it home. Yes, because one thing about cooking and any other thing is that if yeah. you don't need to go too far, yeah. then you need to embrace the culture. culture yeah. So once you are preparing food that is somehow more strange, relatable. yes, people yeah. know really, but there's hardly any... Now. Nigerian Adeline family Nigerian that, that have... doesn't like planting. Okay, so let's quickly so, run so. through our menu for our bruschetta. We have garlic, bell peppers, breadcrumbs, mozzarella cheese, chopped plantain, tomatoes, egg salsa, baguettes, steak seasoning, and shredded chicken. Yes. That, if you're just joining us, we're making Natito's bruschetta with this pari bread. That is like a rock. So, since we are still going to fry it again. Okay, it so you don't to, fry it too much. Yes. Okay, okay. You might want to take note of that. Yes. Okay. But I feel like for, I don't know, maybe it's just like my, my personal reservations. Every and time also, to, yeah? we need to allow it to cool down. So by the time we coat it with the, uh, with the egg and yeah. everything. So that's why we did it first. Oh, okay, so okay, 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 okay. yes. So you didn't cut the plantain today? No. So we're just having like Nigerian style. Exactly. Not Nathaniel style. It's only okay. about surprise, so <laughs> I don't become too predictable. <laughs> Well, this is surprising. And another, another thing is that as I fried the chicken first before the mm -hmm. plantain, yeah. some of the flavor and the yeah, spices is got, there. Oh, so great. That's so the plantain, you see? We still have a little something, something of Nathaniel. Okay. So we fried so, that. So what are we working on next? So let me just move that away. Yes, and continue doing this. So the bread is going to come last, last okay. because of uh, so that it will not be cold. Okay. So we are going to do the bread last. So I just want to get all this because after frying the plantain, we are going to stir fry stir the fried. vegetables, yeah. which are going to use in the plate. In the and plate, and okay. Now. And that is where this would the come. The basil in. comes in. Yes. So if you are watching, like I was watching the show yesterday, and mm. I was the, the chef that was cooking. I started to take things, take note, and take 
take things down. So you might be feeling like, eh, it's not like I'm going to eat it. So it's not basically just for you to eat it now. You might want to just jot down a thing or two so that one day when you're just strolling in the market, you could just be like, oh, let me check my phone notes. I think Chef Nathaniel did this and you see bell peppers and you're trying to remember what's the other thing, what's the other thing. You just don't know. You just might prepare this for yourself at home. So you might want to take notes and take jot things down. Because these are things that we readily find in our markets. Yes, I mean, yes. apart from the this one, you have to get bread. it in the mall. There's the, no other from supermarkets, yeah. Supermarket, yes, yeah. Supermarket but I mean, you know, you could just go the agege style. And funny style. enough, exactly. Funny enough, you can still use the agege bread. Yeah. Food Which I feel like. Activities. So I mean, although you definitely can use the soft one, so eh. those strong one. Is there all a those reason brown why? It if has you use the soft one, mm -hmm. it will be too. <laughs> Which English should I use? <laughs> because this bread is naturally kind of strong. So strong, yeah. if it's the soft one, you might not really get the full the, the yeah. uh, biscuit feeling, but yes. you shall eat it. Yeah. <laughs> Which is Who the major key. Not just key? Now. To have some. <laughs> the major key. Exactly. So it just Okay. Mm. Plantains get it done. Okay, so while we're allowing the plantain to fry, we're going to go on a quick break. Don't go anywhere. We definitely want to see how this baguette bread is going to turn out. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you for staying with us. Now, Optimal Health has never been more important. Dr. Lucien Peter Ogunubi is back with us to continue our discussion from last week on optimizing your mental health awareness during this pandemic. Hello, Doctor. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Good morning. How are you doing? How are you doing? Well, I'm fine. You can see I'm on the road moving. Exactly. And, that's and uh, that's one. So we woke up together. Okay. What time did you wake up this morning? Thank you. Uh, well, I had to wake up as early as 6 o'clock because oh. of certain runs. You know, Lagos runs. Okay. Uh, for <laughs> so me, because, 6 o'clock. Because of that, I had to go, oh, I had to sleep earlier. As I said, we need to maintain good rest. So, you know, so doctor, I for me. Earlier and I to wake up. Okay. For me, doctor, 6 o'clock is actually very late. If I wake up by 6, I'm, I remember when we had our first discussion, you spoke about the importance of sleep when it comes to mental health. Sleep. Yes. Yeah? Yes. So okay. you have to make sure that you have to make sure that you sleep early if you know that you have to wake up early. Mm. I All don't right. know in Lagos to say how is that possible. I, in fact, actually possible. Let's let's start. Let's let's pick up with that. How in, in Lagos, as Lagos is, where some people would have to stay in traffic up until Maybe 10, before they get back home, you are, you know, at times you're even too tired to sleep. It does happen. How do yeah. you, how do you yeah. pick up? How do you get enough sleep in a city like Lagos? So they should ensure that their weekend is sleep. I tell people, Monday to Friday, no problem. But all those accumulated sleep areas, make sure weekend. It's not the time, thank God for no one bed now. Thank God that you can stay at home. Make sure that Saturday, Sunday, you now use it to, it's like you are repaying your body back for what you have lost. But for you see sick people, even on Saturday, they still go and do some runs. So Sunday, you have to lose. The truth is that if you, if you break down all those things you think, you think you need to put in place, we still wait. Hmm. So why try to say, I have to be there, I have to be there, and you neglect the alarm system, you neglect the resistance of your body until the body goes to a state of exhaustion. So mm. if you can't do it Monday to Friday, I always plan more that weekend. Make sure you don't joke. All right. So, Doctor, let's kick off from where we stopped last week, uh, talking about optimizing the mental uh, health awareness during a pandemic as such. Of course, we've, we've mentioned sleep. What are the other pointers that you're about to give us now? Yeah, so we mentioned sleep. We talked about the need for rest. We talked about putting our coat according to our size. This is not the time to choose what your neighbor is choosing. This is not the time to do things beyond your level. We talked about the need for you to acquire new skills. You need to, because jobs are downsizing, many people are losing their jobs. And for you to be relevant in this present age, you need to understand new technology, new ways of doing things. This is not the time to live in analog age, because we are in digital. We are even moving past the digital. We are mm. in chair speed, ultrasonic speed. So you have to keep up moving. And mm. you could change, of course, the constant thing. 
It's also important for people to know that they need to understand their system. What are the sort of coping strategies we are using? Do you know some people use maladaptive coping strategies? They either mm. drink to stupor, they either get aggressive, they either displace and run away from home, run away from their responsibilities, all because the pressure is so much on them. This will further boomerang and it will be a vicious cycle. This is the time to apply adaptive coping style, look at others, learn new things, ask questions, resolve issues, look at other ways you can do things, look at how to cut your coat according to your clothes. These are the adaptive ways, not being, you know, uh, aggressive, not being reckless because the situation has overwhelmed you. It is mm. also important for people to know that it is okay not to be okay. When you are overwhelmed, seek for help. When people ask you, how are you doing? It is better, it is good to tell them, I am not fine. Don't monitor. Don't say I am okay when you are not okay. So this morning, people should learn that it is okay not to be okay. It is not a sign of weakness. It's actually a sign of strength. When you know you have emotion, your emotion is feeling down, you have no mental fitness, and you need to seek therapy. Don't say, God, for this, not my posture. I will pray about it. I will go and seek. No, 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 no. That is the time. Also, we will tell people that it is good for us to be empathic this period of time. If you have them, give to those who don't have at all. Mm. Watch your neighbor. Mm. You must empathize with them. You must connect before you connect. Wonderful. Those are the things I've been talking in the last three, four months. Connect before you condemn. Look at the reason why your children are behaving this way, because they are told they are not in school. They are tired. They are asking, Why am, where are my friends? So some of them will go into regressive behavior. They start bedwetting. Some will be showing, throwing tantrums. Some will just be disobedient. Why? Because they are overwhelmed. They don't know. You are even going out as parents. Children are locked down at all. So most of the times, we need to empathize. We need to understand that they are going through a lot, so that you don't become very angry when they do certain things, and that will also boomerang, and we continue to have, and this is the time to have family reunion. If you mm. have uh, parents, this is the time to call them. We say it is physical distance, not social distance. We are social animals, and we cannot afford to socially distance from ourselves. It is important mm. that we connect, we have family meetings, we have everything can happen virtually, but we still know that we are connected. Ask after your friends, know how they are doing. It is also possible when you begin to feel certain symptoms, like you want to feel withdrawn, you are tired. Living every day is so mechanical. Help is near. Call for help. Don't say I will manage it up. You are not sleeping. You are restless. You are panicky because you are paying salaries for people who are not even working, because you have asked them to work from home. You have to pay half salary, especially owners of schools, professors, professors, and co. So this is not the time to be anxious. This is the time to seek for help. How do I do it? Mm. Going to therapy, going to psychiatrist does not mean you are mad, and mm. you are really mad working on the road. Mm. It means that you are going to the mental health therapist, psychiatrist, psyche, Brain, it does not mean you are mad, you are wearing dirty clothes, and you are picking things from the gutter. It all means that you are not sleeping well. It all means that you are almost sad most of the time. It means that you are always getting panicky. It always means that you are getting anxious. It means that your mind is not at rest. You cannot do things you used to do. You cannot concentrate the way you used to concentrate before. Your memory is failing you. These are the kind of people that you seek help. It is okay not to be okay. And wow. that's what I'm running this session of this morning, that it is possible for people to be weak. The same way you have malaria, type 4, arthritis, you can also have any problem with the brain, because the brain is an organ, just like the heart, the lungs, the kidneys, are organs in the body. And they can fail. They can fail in their function. It doesn't mean that heart, liver, all those ones are medical. But when it comes to brain, it is arrow of the enemy. It is mother-in-law in the village. It is people you do not send money home. They are the ones that are not saying they will deal with you. No! We should stop all this mess and know that any of our organs can fail. Mental health, physical health are so important. So Thank as you. Physical fitness, we must Thank always you. maintain emotional 
Thank you so much, Doctor. You uh, struck a chord with that one. It was a home run. Thank you so much. Uh, looking forward to rounding this up with you next week. Have a wonderful day, Doctor. Thank you. So much. All right. Oh, now that was uh, quite an earful. And of course, I hope you were able to educate yourself and get enlightened with that one. Okay, so um, there's mental health, there's physical health, uh, there's also, uh, what do you call it now? Stomach health, or what? <laughs> uh, what kind of laugh is that? That's ha ha. I'm <laughs> laughing as well, you say now, stomach health. Yeah, what your kind, what diet, kind of take like ha ha? Your diet, man. Latino, show her how to laugh, please. Oh my days, you've just been hating on me today. I don't know. I don't, you see, right, even so? Nathaniel said he doesn't know. He doesn't yeah. know. It was happening. Yeah, there. so we're making our bruschetta and um, we've done a lot of the frying. So if you're just joining us, we have Chef Nathaniel from Natito's Cuisine and we're making bruschetta. We've decided to travel again today. And we have the baguettes and we have our chicken, which we fried, we marinated and fried, our bell peppers, onions, and then the plantain. Now we've broken our eggs and we have our breadcrumbs, uh, breadcrumbs here. So now we decided to come to show you this live so you can be part of the process. We're going to, it's not called marinating, we're going to coat it, coat it with the eggs, yeah? First dip it, in the First dip it okay. Okay. And it's also important to note that the chicken we didn't fry too deep. Too deep, yes, because yes. Because we're going yes. to fry it again. So again, yes. Yeah. I'll just move this so here a bit. Yeah. Cut it a bit. And the reason for coating, for dipping it inside egg is so that it's going to stick. Stick, of course, of course. The bread comes. Bread if we just crumbs. put it directly, it's going to fall off. Yeah, of course. And that's why we first fry the chicken so that we'll give it time for it to cool. To cook, okay. yes. yes. So it's the first thing that you fry when you're making your bruschetta. Because so if you just fry it in the clay and want to do it, the egg will cook on it. Exactly. <laughs> even got to the egg. You see, cooking. chef talk by hey. Yes. Yeah, so now we're gonna put it here. Yep. Okay. So did you? Is the oil still on fire? No, no. Oh, so it doesn't have to be hot, hot, no. hot. Okay. This is interesting. All right, we we'll use that to eat bread. Exactly. <laughs> no more agigi bread. Agigi bread. Okay. Okay. I can see how that is going. So by so that now, we now fry it to not be very crunchy. To not crunchy. be like all those supermarkets <laughs> chicken. Yes, we got it. <laughs> those fast food, all those restaurants. If you want to show me, I'm always for showing off. You want to show off, show your cooking skills. Chef Nathaniel just showed you how to make your own coated chicken Can you remember and then to be the, crunchy the, crunchy the, the other time that i use gary yes 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 so and you can also friends. have gary as an alternative see eh? wake up nigeria is just the best place to be apart from what happens in the kitchen there's so much to learn but we're going to go on a break the second hour is up uh well, wake up nigeria continues right after this break do not go anywhere Just look at that. We've run through this morning already two hours gone. Wow. Mm, talking about running through. Re re are you really combing your beard, Mike? Hmm. Really? <laughs> really? Okay. You know of course, what? there's been food. We had an etiquette segment. Madam Janet, what would you say about this? Huh? Etiquette on live TV. I'm just saying. <laughs> food, etiquette, so much, some much needed hacks and so much more, all packaged just for you. That's the deal right here on Wake Up Nigeria. Now, of course, we <laughs> remain committed to ensuring that we bring you the very best of entertainment mm -hmm. and information. That's all that we do here. Yeah. But five more minutes to go, but we have quite a little bit more in store for you. I am Mike. And I'm Titi Laya Oyinson. You can, of course, stream the show live at tvcentertainment.tv and on Facebook, you can stream live at TVC Connect. You can also connect with us via the app and watch us anywhere around the world. Mm. Mm. Android, okay. iOS, anyone. Mm. So there's still a bit more. We have uh, yeah. tech call coming on right up yeah. quite very soon. Or mm. We're going to be talking about productivity yeah. um, uh, during these times, during these times of the pandemic, of course. Uh, and then uh, art. Uh, I love this piece. I love this piece. Beautiful art. I love there. this piece. So much effort put into that. We have on art display, uh, we'll be having Emmanuel Umoran, 
and a display of the collection of his paintings. Beautiful. Mm. And then there's also a book. Yeah. No, but yeah, there's also a book, uh, Broken People's uh, Playlist mm. by Chimeka Garrix. A Broken People's Playlist. Uh, the ladies are really very interested about this I'm one. So mm -hmm. And uh, we're looking forward to what he has to say. Then, lastly, we have a discussion coming up with actress, writer, and producer Nengi Adoki. Yes. Uh, her attitude is just on another level. Honestly, I'm going um, to have to watch. Big shout out to that. Chef Nathaniel. He's cooking up a storm in the kitchen as well. Yes. Something smells good. Skitters. Mm -hmm. mm. So uh, I, I think Bella Rose is on the line. Mm. Um, hello, Bella. We have, of course, a tech discussion which we uh, started last week. We're yeah. talking about productivity during uh, these uh, times. Of course, uh, everybody has to has moved or has to move from the analog to the digital world. And uh, OAP and tech uh, enthusiast and expert Bella Rose Okoje is in the house. Hello, Bella. Hi, Mike. Good Yo, morning. Bella. Hi, TITI. <laughs> Yo, Bella Rose. Yo, Bella Rosa Koji. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, Bella, how are you doing this morning? It's so fantastic. I've had a very dramatic morning, if I'm being honest. But mm. um, nothing this girl cannot withstand. Ah, <laughs> your head is there. Chop virtual, chop virtual knuckle. <laughs> chop virtual knuckle. Mm. Virtual one. <laughs> All right. So, um... Let's do a very, very fast recap of what we did last week. We spoke about um, productivity apps and hacks that we could use, mostly for um, Android phones, Android right? Users. Okay, yes. so are we looking at iOS today? Yes, we'll try to touch on iOS today. Okay, um, all right. I had to use my brother's iPhone to get some productivity apps, and uh, they are very, very useful. Uh, a number of them are free, and I think that's one of the reasons why not many people like to use some applications on, on the iPhone uh, device, because a number of their applications are paid for. And you know how we are with money in this part of the world. Um, mm. But I've got a few of these apps that are free to use. And okay. so um, one, of, one, one of such apps would be... Um, to do is right to do is the very useful app if you need to uh, highlight your activities for the day right so it's a to do app it's a to do uh, app yes that you can um, have remind you of what you need to do after time and it acts as a nagging pa <laughs> such that if you don't remember to do these things it will keep reminding you over and over and over again until okay. you actually check that you have done that thing before mm. it then leaves your screen yeah, um, okay. but beyond uh, just to do is there there's another app uh, i did not mention last week that just like android users have uh, google apple users have siri you can tell siri to also remind you about things hey okay. siri do X, Y, Z, remind me about this or that. So I think hmm. it was a bit of a justice for iPhone users last week when I made it look like <laughs> okay, but you know, was the be all no all. There was this, uh, <laughs> there was this hack uh, that came to Siri in the US that had to do with uh, whenever you're pulled over. You know, I don't know if you heard about it when yes, you pulled over. Yes, yes, uh, but yes. it was not that's it was it, that's what was not working here. It was not it's like <laughs> it was not working here. So it's like Siri has some um how do I put it now? Some geographical limitations or yes. geographical yeah, boundaries. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's not everything but that Siri can do across the sea that Siri can to do. To a large extent, a lot of their you know um systems over there are interconnected. You know, data is no small thing in other climes. We're still grappling with um, data synchronization here in Nigeria. So I think we are on our way to doing that. Uh, just as an aside, the former DG of the Public Reforms, uh, Bureau of Public Service Reforms, Dr. Joe Abba, had talked about how the pre president um, added him to the committee of making Nigeria digital by 2025, giving every Nigerian a digital identity. Mm. So we hope that that would work. So 200 and something million of us hopefully should have an actual digital identity by 2025 so that things like this can work well for us. And that's why these apps are getting updated because they are now using stuff like your geographical location, your history, and all of these things to have to, to create a profile of sorts for you such that you don't have to do paperwork everywhere mm. all the time. You know mm. what I mean? All so, right. Okay. So, so yeah, there's more? that. There's also Spark. Um, 
Spark is an application that is useful for people who work heavily on email, right? Um, it, it, it helps you not to miss certain important things that are in your email. Um, also, it connects with other applications on your iPhone such that um, you're able to, like I mentioned last week about how you're able to synchronize information such that one thing is not clashing with the other. That's how Spark also works. And for the business owners out there, you can also use Telegram, right, for your meetings. If you don't want to use WhatsApp because it is very distracting, you can use Telegram on your iPhone and also on your uh, on your Apple device as well. So Telegram, WhatsApp for business, uh, Zoom as well. You know, these are things that also exist on the on the iPhone app. There's also an application that's called Evernote. Evernote is a very useful application as well that can help you um, go beyond organizing your day, but also help you prepare stuff. So in the event that you have, for instance, a a um, presentation. You can use Evernote to prepare it and Evernote will save what you have done in the cloud. So if you go somewhere and you want to uh, open that presentation, if you don't have your device with you, just log into your Evernote uh, account. And it's because we talked about cloud storage last, last week, it's in the cloud and you can just access it from anywhere that you are. So mm. this also is very useful for people who are like creatives who sometimes are somewhere and they need to take something down. You could do Wonderful. that there, you know, save Wonderful, it Bella. and wherever you are, as long as you have internet, you're able to access that. All right, as Bella. Well. All right, Bella, um, you know what? There's Bella? also Things 3. Okay, Bella. Things 3 is the last app. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, very fast, very fast. Let's go through that one. Okay. So, so Things 3 is very useful. It is clean, it's simple to use. It's capable of also putting all your tasks and organizing them for you. Um, it's available for iPhone, iPad, and Mac. Though you have to pay for it separately, but um, it, it, it does a lot of reminding for you and it helps to really, really organize your stuff. It is so artificial, artificially intelligent that, you know, um, it comes in very, very handy for people who sometimes may feel disorganized or feel like they need a virtual personal assistant to help them with just being productive and not wasting their time because there's no physical uh, interaction with colleagues and bosses and clients. All right. Thank you so much, Bella. It's always, always a pleasure talking to you. We know we have some more episodes. We'll still be talking about more. Let's say the next two, three episodes, you'll still be with us. Have yourself a wonderful day. Good. Thank you so much. Have a good day yourself. All right. Okay. So that was uh, the tech guru herself, uh, OAP Bella Rose Okoji. Now we have to move over. Talk about you've had plenty. This is like the seventh time we've come to the kitchen today, or yeah. like eighth time. The seventh and eighth time that I'm going to tell you that you're not eating from this bruschetta. <laughs> I don't worry. You the will Lord beg has me. us covered. You will beg me. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the kitchen, people. I have Chef Nathaniel with me, and we're still in the process of making our bruschetta. And now we have chopped, <laughs> because this is not slicing, but we've sliced the baguette bread. And trust me, guys, you have to use, like, a jigsaw. <laughs> Yeah, because the bread so is go through the bread. The strong bread. The bread is hard. You know what the level chicken. your bread gets to in a, our Nigerian bread that you throw it away that it's too hard. <laughs> That's this bread. Okay, yeah. So now what have we been doing? So we've been doing our elk salsa. So okay. salsa is just the, the Mexican name for sauce. Oh, okay. So okay. We're gonna have egg sauce and a little of this. Of that. Okay. This, so. Okay. So this is just gonna. When are we gonna fry this? After. Okay, After let's me fry this. Okay, now we'll still do we'll this. We'll do that, okay. Because it will take all the, the oil. oil so yeah. Just. Okay, so the same. So what the um, peppers and onions that we fried? Little just little onions. onions, okay. These are for the um, final garnishing. Yes. We've not put ataru do. Oh, well, not, no, it's just. Oh, no, it's wow. just so if you're a pepper paste. lover, you might want to add it by yourself. Exactly. So. Just okay with um, tinned tomatoes. Yep. So do we have to use, make this salsa when mm. we're preparing you know, um, the bruschetta? Not actually composition. So it's just like a side. Yes. So it's just okay. so, like I said, this. The this major thing th is layering. Yes, just layer so you can do it the way you want. Okay. But the basically. It's usually tomato. Tomatoes, okay. And um, the bread. Bread, bread so and you the can chicken. also add chicken, fish, or. Oh, I get you. So basically, the bruschetta is the bread, bread and, and the tomatoes. tomatoes. So it's oh. kind of like a sauce. So it's always red. Oh, okay. You even go I online, you just type in bruschetta. bruschetta. You just see the bread and red tomatoes. tomatoes. So, oh, okay. So, so this is like your, yes. your um, 2.0 version. Exactly. Of it. All right, all right. 
<laughs> and if I should do it that way alone, yeah, it will somehow look boring for Nigerians. Yes. You know, we like those extra, guys extra. over there. Their food is just they can just take one small thing and. And they beat But we, we like. We have to let you know. You know, let them know. Mm. <laughs> That's a show. Okay. It's so we we'll make the salsa. So that means it's also possible for I'm just thinking now. Mm. Possible like you're making a burger, so you could use this um salsa yes. in the burger. Uh, there are different okay. if we see there's some people's burger in. Eh? Yeah. Hey. If we see some people's burger, you would think ah this one went to school. In Harvard. Exactly. So <laughs> not just the basic cheddar yeah. cheese and that yeah, yeah, is yeah, boring. Yeah. You will see some do it. They'll do it well. So. So next is the eggs. Yeah. Okay. So it's like an egg sauce. Yes. So I don't want to use the an egg English tomato sauce. egg sauce. Yeah. So once you no, this is not this egg. is not egg sauce yeah. because of the tomatoes. Yes. So just so. I hope you guys are enjoying this as much as I am. With Chef Nathaniel, you're always learning something. So once that is done a bit, yeah. it will have soaked the little oil. That's why I reduced it. So it this was, okay. one will be used to fry this, this chicken. Okay. So as okay. the coating would, not as it is now. It has even stuck exactly. already. Exactly. So by the so time we fry it, it's not been. Crush, crush, crush. Now layer it down there. Okay. But so when we layer it, are we gonna double it? No, no, it's just like it's this. Just, you so you're just gonna eat it yeah. like oimbo? Yes. <laughs> All right. So right after that, what do we do with the basil? Are we gonna Busy. chop it? We're going to Okay, we're gonna put it there. It's, it's just for, for the garnishing. garnishing. Okay, so. I get you. I'm following. And then the chicken. <laughs> Y'all are laughing at me. I'm following, man. I'm going it's to do to my follow. own. You and can be like me and This kind of breakfast yours, is also yeah. good for now that we are now working from, from home. So you don't need to, you can just have just little. Yeah, and these are things that you, you have in your house. I yes, mean, apart from this. Apart from the every yes. other thing. You can I mean, you it. can just go and just stand on your streets and just wait for the next Agege bread seller exactly. <laughs> and buy yours so and make. Clean this. Yeah, with your bell peppers and your egg and your tomatoes and your chicken and your um, breadcrumbs. If you don't have breadcrumbs, you could crush your biscuits and have biscuit crumbs. Oh, I like the way this egg sauce looks. It's totally different. All right, you know what? Before I get all distracted with this, you definitely want to stick around. Let's go on a break, we'll be right back. Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. Uh, now we have Chimeka Garrix, who was born in Dublin and raised in Port Harcourt. He is the author of uh, the acclaimed novel, Tomorrow Died Yesterday, and actually wrote a uh, book in focus for this morning, A Broken People's Playlist, which is a collection of short stories in the soundtrack of life. Now to avoid writing another novel, now 12 music-inspired stories are told about love, the human conditions, life micro moments, and an everyday search for meaning and redemption. Hello, Garrick. Hello, good morning. Good morning, how are you doing this morning? I'm fine, how are you? I am great, I am great. Now this, um, this novel is intriguing. Um, uh, the, 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 the title alone, you know, A Broken People's Playlist is really catchy. Why such a title? What was it, what, what was it, what was in your mind putting this, um, this collection of short stories together and why that particular title? So the stories were um, all inspired by songs. Um, I'm, I'm bad with titles when I was writing the stories. So as what, I, what I did was um, the songs that inspired the stories or the main songs that inspired the stories, I titled each story after that song. Mm. So, so it's a, at the end of the day, it became a playlist. Think, right. of it like, um, a sound, think of it like a soundtrack to a movie. A soundtrack, yeah, 12 songs. What, yeah. what yeah, genres or, or, did or you... Instead of a movie, stories. Okay, so let's talk about the songs first of all. What genres did the song cut, cut across? Who are the artists involved that you, that you use for these ones? Let's just talk about the songs first. Okay, so it's, um, it's an eclectic list. Um, you have Adam, Adam Levine, um, Lost Stars. You have Eric Simon and Martin Gay music. You have um, Hot by Johnny Cash. You have Nina Simone. You have PM Don. You have Kings of... Leon, you have Primo, you have Bess and Yemi Aladdin. It's an eclectic list. 
wonderful it is. You, know, you also have the Eagles. Mm. Crazy wow. old songs, Anton, new songs. Yeah. Quite eclectic and eccentric, I must say. Now, you, you base your story on Potaka. That was where you grew up and all of that. What is that, uh, what is yes, that, I, what is that um, link that you have to Potaka and all of that? Let's, let's talk about you growing up in Potaka and how it affected <laughs> this book. So, um, Potaka is well. one of those things. One of those, you know, like I said, it's like my first law. Um, is for people in Potaka, Potaka is not so much... It's not the greatest of cities, but it's just just has that thing, just has that hold on me. Um, I've been in Lagos for five years now, and I still don't feel like a Lagosian. I'm actually more of a Kutako person than a mm. Lagosian. Don't worry, I've been in Lagos and for almost 10 years now. <laughs> and I, and uh, <laughs> where, are you, where are you from? I grew up in Patakot. <laughs> oh, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you get so it. So I grew up in Patakot. Um, yeah, you, yeah, you. you how it yeah, yeah. So I, I, I kind of get. So let's 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 break it down now. Now these stories. I know you talk about. Um, there's some way that you talk about a drunken man who called back his ex his ex wife. Uh, there's also a story about a young lady and all of that. They are interwoven, right? All stories are interwoven. Hello, are you there? Okay, we're well, still uh, immediately, uh, maybe quite a little bit of a technical hitch there. We'll get across to him as soon as we can. Of course, I, I'm kind of relating with what he's talking about here. And um, this is something that will make a good read. I mean, when you have stories that interlink, they stand on their own, but at the same time, they interlink. It's just something of a kind of universe. I think about Marvel Cinematic Universe and how different stories stand on their own and at the same time interlink. That's what I want to talk to him about now and get into his mind and understand what that is about. But then we're still here with him. Whenever we get across uh, just a slight technical hitch, we will have to call back. We'll We'll definitely keep on talking with him okay that's of course going to be quite a very 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 interesting one that it will make all right so talk by um no okay no there's no I, there's no way to join this one i know that you're not thinking of writing a book anytime soon you'll be surprised <laughs> well it's true you might you know you don't have to write it yourself you bring the idea you could get a ghost writer or something you know you just put out, it can be your life experience. You know, you have a very wonderful story. Yeah, but I, if I'm going to write a book, I think I would write it myself so that you could actually go through the journey with me. Ah, but yeah. mommy, that's what's up, that's what's up, that's what's up. <laughs> I'm going to read that book. I'll, I'll, you'll buy it. I'll sponsor the, the book. Please, you'll buy it. Support people. I'll support sponsor the book. Oh, shit! <laughs> they don't know. Alpha, Alpha, what's that? Ah. That yes. theater was smaller. There's plenty. The spread is looking very Mike, large. Mike, you're not eating. Don't, don't, worry. don't worry. I'm not eating this food. Don't even stress it. The you've Lord been, has got you us called covered. me out seven, eight times. Remember? The Remember? Has, I told you. The Lord you. has got us. <laughs> now, yes, back in the kitchen, we're making our bruschetta. We have Chef Nathaniel. And I've, I'm sure I've mentioned this so many times, but I'm really interested in this. It's the baguette bread that we use a saw <laughs> to <laughs> cut through. Yes, so yeah, now... Yeah, are we this, pan frying? Yes, just to soften it so, a bit. You see, so we have to do soft. Uh, that's the that's the nature of the bread. So, so if you're at home and you want to try this and you feel like you don't want to go through the has, hustle of getting hard bread, just buy our agege. That bread keeps saving lives. Like it's in sixty-four. Since it was invented, I'm sure it was before eighteen sixty-four. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so we have fried our chicken that when we shredded and. We used um, breadcrumbs. breadcrumbs to, I won't say marinate, to coat. coat yes. yes. And we have our bell peppers and our onions. And we have the basil and the egg sauce that um, he used tin tomatoes to actually achieve. Now, you might want to try that. I think you could also use that to eat your normal bread. Yeah. Um, maybe noodles, whatever you want to make. I think it's, it's an int a new interesting way to make, to scramble your eggs. So after this... That's when we're going to start the layering. O'Shea. I want to see where we're going to put the basil. OK. We're going to chop it up. We're just going to put no, it just going to put it at the top. Oh, at the, oh OK, OK. So this is done. And our plantain. Yeah. Our signature plantain. The prince of Nigerian food. As, <laughs> and yes. The king is, I think, Nathaniel is asking plantain itself <laughs> to endorse it. Exactly. Him. I don't know if plantains can now talk. <laughs> You'll be surprised. I'll be surprised. This I mean, is Nigeria. I didn't think I'm food. <laughs> <laughs> so this is so. Is it possible to use a toast machine to make yes, this? Yes, but, but if you, you don't have one, put this in, in toast a toast machine. Yes. Actually, so you can even use sliced bread. Yeah. Sliced bread, then toast it. Toast it. Okay. Then, then do this. Yes, but remember, it's the baguette bread. Yes, that is 
Because if you use agege bread and if you use um, sliced, um, bread. sliced bread, you are, you are no more doing bruschetta. Bruschetta, you yeah. Doing you are doing so bruschetta. The thigh is not oh, there. So once you just remove one thing, it becomes a different meal. Oh, it could be their own bruschetta creation. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to start with the, with layer the layering. Then, yeah. Okay. So then it just gets a little spoon. Start it. Yep. All right. Yeah. So, so let's watch closely for the layering. I need to get my. So this is another way, this is okay. another different way of eating your bread and egg. Okay, so you know what, while we're going to do our first layering, um, we have Mike on standby to take an interview. But when we come back, you're going to see how we achieved the entire bruschetta. Mike is all yours. Yeah, we're picking up uh, from uh, where we dropped off. Uh, Garrick is back online. Hello. Hi, hi, Mike. Hi, good. Sorry I dropped off. Now, the yes, internet. good. We're trying to talk about the interplay or the, 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 the interwoven stories, each one separate on their own, but they are interwoven, right? Yeah, some okay. stories are interwoven, yes. Okay, take us through, take us through, take us through that. So, um, a story called um, Hot. There's, there's a character in a story called Hot. He even appears in um, another story. Um, there's a character, there's also another character in a story called Music, we see him as this, he's, he, the main character in music is um, 16, he's 17. He um, mm. wants to be a DJ, we see him first at 17. Then we see him in Desperado as a middle-aged man and he's divorced and he's trying to get back with his ex-wife. Um, no. You know, and he, call, he drunk calls her, you know, trying to get her not to marry, trying to get her not to, trying to get her not to remarry. Okay. Now, is a broken people's playlist, is this some sort of, um a healing process. But by, 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 by that, I mean, is it something that somebody who is actually broken can go through and maybe get some form of redemption, like you mentioned? Is it something that someone can, that people can relate with and maybe at the end of it get, um, you know, that bit of healing that they might need? Hopefully, yes. Hopefully, I mean, that's one of my, my, my intentions with the book. And another thing I wanted people to identify is, like, you know, we all have, or many of us have, um, personal traumas or the things that we went through in life that affect the way we behave. And we think it's little things, or we might not really think it's, it's serious, but, but little things like, or serious things that would have happened to us before um, affects who we are now. And until those things are addressed in a way, either through therapy or, or God, um, you know, some of us can't really make it through. Um, mm. Some of us can't really make the changes we need in our lives. Okay, so, so the, the, the general theme of this book is one that you'd say is one of redemption and healing. That's wonderful. That's redemption wonderful. and healing, exactly. Yeah. All right, that's, that's, that's a very great one. That's a very great one. Thank you very much for sharing with us today on this one. And uh, here's wishing you the best. I will definitely want to go oh, check this out and, understand, and see where the, you know, the links with Potakot, the Garden City, and see what's up there. Thank you very much, Chimeka. If you're a Potakot, Potakot boy, read, read it, you enjoy it. Definitely, definitely I will. Thank you very much, Chimeka. Thank you. Thank you for, thank you for having me. All thank right. You. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Of course, uh, that was Chimeka Garricks, and we spoke about a broken people's playlist, some sort of redemption and healing for people who might want to, you know, um, who are going through things and uh, can relate to what exactly is in that book. We'll take a break now. There's still more, a little bit more to come on the show. Don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Now we have Nengi Adoke. She is a Nigerian born and Canada trained actress, writer and producer. She made history as the lead actress in Nigeria's first exported musical theatre to London's West End, where she played Kike Johnson in Waka the Musical. Mm, she also played the lead female character in one of Nigeria's longest running musicals as Ariola in Heartbeat the Musical. Yes, she is currently the writer and producer of her own web series, The Most Toasted Girl, which aims to explore the experiences of women and women dating and living in Lagos. <laughs> so I guess that was part of one of the scenes we saw yeah. in the highlights, yeah, right? Yeah, they gave her money. She oh, will, we'll wow. talk about that money. <laughs> I, I love the, the look and feel of the miniseries already. Yeah. And Nengi, hi. Yes. Hi, Nengi. How's it going? Hi. 
fine. Hi, how are you? Oh, fine. How are you doing this morning? I'm good. I'm good. I feel great, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And the energy is right. I'm mm -hmm. excited to be here with you guys. This good morning. to have a good energy at this point. Good to have a good energy. My goodness. That's a powerful smile for early in the morning. Like, honestly, I think you're waking <laughs> some people up this morning with that Thank smile. You. <laughs> Your energy is infectious. Um, just from the few scenes Aww. I saw in the clips earlier, I was just like, I was pulled in. Uh, but that kind wow. of energy doesn't happen overnight. So let's talk about how, yeah. how hard you had to train to get to that stage. Hmm? Um, so as far as, so let me repeat the question. You're talking about my acting, is that what Yes, of course, yeah. of course. Uh, uh. Awesome. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't hear that very well. Uh, okay, yeah, no. How hard did I have to train? Wow. Um, so a lot of people don't know this, but uh, I celebrated uh, a decade in the industry, in the business of acting last year. Oh, wow. In 2019. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> uh, I am blessed to have gone to acting school, performing school, where I uh, learned to sing, I danced, mm. I acted. Uh, and these days I'm a writer and I'm a producer as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, it's been a lot of training. I mean, my first couple years of university, I spent five years doing both IT stuff and also performance art stuff in theory. Mm -hmm. And then I did practical stuff outside of that mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> for uh, a year and a half at a performance art school. Um, and then I started performing in Toronto, uh, which is where I went to school as well before moving back Oh, mm. So Shay, welcome back. So oh, that, that trajectory, that, that trajectory just seems like, you know, that's, that's a lot of work you've put in there. Um, but then yes. you decided to come home, even though it, yes. it feels yes. like, you know, yes. there were a lot of opportunities out there as well. Yeah, I'd say yes and no. Um, there are opportunities in Toronto to act, definitely. Um, and I was part of the pool of black actors. Um, that we're um, constantly vying for roles, right? Yeah. Um, but I think right now at the stage that we are in the industry, it's really, um, it's really hot right now to just you know be African, be, be, you know be black, and and I love that we are having more representation on on, on screen. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, um, and I don't feel bad about this because I like seeing black people on screen. Mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes when you are looking for black roles abroad, if you don't actually look dark, mm -hmm. <laughs> like really dark skinned, mm -hmm. then it's almost like you're not African. Mm. Sometimes. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah, so uh, for me, um, there, there was that problem, you know, just being able to act African roles while being a little light skinned. Again, like I said, I'm not complaining. Mm -hmm. um, I decided to move back to Nigeria because I was also very interested and curious in telling uh, more Nigerian stories. And also, you know, like I just said, it, broadening the spectrum of what it means to be black, what it means to be African, what it means specifically Nigerian on screen. So, right. yeah. okay, so um, let's talk about your produced um, series, The Most Toasted Girl. Tell us what inspired yeah. the story. <laughs> what, what? What inspired, what inspired the, the story, The Most Toasted Girl? Right, what inspired the story? Okay, so The Most Toasted Girl is very interesting, right? Um, obviously, while I was in school abroad, I was still keeping in touch with Nigeria, you know, constantly coming back, constantly visiting, and honestly, yeah. My most interesting toasters <laughs> have been from Nigeria. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, did you did you really me, get offered it was money? More so, mm -hmm. Sorry, say that again. Did you really get offered money just by walking on the streets? Yeah, yeah, I would get. I'm not gonna lie about that. I did get offered uh, offered a lot of money. Uh, sometimes cars, sometimes trips. Um, and it's not like I was just sitting there. I mean, I'm a I'm a social butterfly, so I'm usually out. Okay. Uh, Toasted Girl is pretty much based off of what my experiences are when I go out. And it's not just me, by the way. Um, okay. You know, after I wrote some of my own experiences, yeah. obviously to keep the show going, you need more content. So I had to still talk to a lot of young women like me to kind of figure out, like, you know, if they were having similar experiences. And guess what? I'm not the only woman who uh, Jeep has stopped in the middle of the road <laughs> saying, dun, 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 baby, take this one. 
you know it's it's easy to it's easy to connect with your your personality and your character uh on the most toasted girl what is it most, yes, toasted, most girl? toasted girl it's easy to connect yes, with it but then have you ever got any criticism for some of the the pieces that you've written um you know you know you know how it is when women come out to tell their truth and other women come right. after them have you ever had any of that yeah. Uh, definitely. I think that if you're, if whatever story that you're telling it, there's, ne there's definitely just not one singular perspective. Mm. Um, so first off, obviously from men, <laughs> they say, are all the guys that you meet crappy? <laughs> I didn't want to, you know, cuss, but yeah, mm. are all the guys that you meet crappy? And it's like, well, no, not all of them are, but guess what? You know, I mean, I'm still here single. So clearly <laughs> all of the... <laughs> All of the past men that I've met, has, none of it has kind of like in, evolved to a really like round relationship. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But having said that, it doesn't make all of them bad. So that's yeah. the number one thing that I get. But what's important to me is being authentic about the ones that actually didn't go well. And mm -hmm. um, so far, so good. The story has started to evolve from you know, dates that didn't go well to hopefully in season two where we're able to shoot it uh, to maybe a relationship or two that are going quite well. So okay, that's all right the then. number one criticism. Uh, let's quickly talk about your character in Men's Club. Now, remember you featuring a um, very interesting um, scenes in season one and then disappeared in season two and came back in season three. And there's a lot of talk about your the chemistry between yourself and um, Badge Adebule. And now, how do you manage the on-screen chemistry and the presumptions of off-screen romance? Hmm. <laughs> well, that is... Um, <laughs> Well, I was gonna, it's not tough. I was gonna say that's tough, but, but really when you have amazing people like Baj on set and everyone else who's on set as well, um, they're extremely professional. Um, Baj, for instance, I know is someone who is very passionate about acting. And for me, beyond the lines, beyond what it is we're supposed to do on screen, especially when things get steamy, what I love the most is connecting with the actor who really cares about the craft. I, I said this uh, a while ago, uh, he and I, we kind of talk about what we're going to do before the scene, then we'll okay. do the scene, then we'll talk about what we did in the scene, <laughs> right? So yeah. when you have someone like that, that's just like very um, easy to get along with, easy to work with, it's amazing. And as far as the talks about off-screen um, romance, honestly, it's expected if you ever, I, I doubt if you play a role where you are connecting with someone in that way um, there'd be zero people you know speculating that things are happening off screen uh, he's an amazing friend of mine and uh, I look forward to continue to you know do that chemistry thing on screen <laughs> okay <laughs> all right thanks for clearing that up uh, but we want to see <laughs> some of your work uh, we want to see a clip or two from the most toasted girl. Let's do it. <laughs> powerful, powerful. Thank you so much, Nengi, for that one. And keep up the great work. Really, really great stuff. Thank you. That Thank was really amazing. So, so but much. you should have taken that money, Shao. But okay, uh, uh, but it's uh, okay. It's okay. Oh, talk about, we'll talk about this one off eh? we'll talk, yeah. So we have had a great time talking to Nengi there. You yeah. should check her out online. Uh, we've also been with Chef Nathaniel of Natido's Cuisine. Yes. All right, so you want to tell us how far? What's good? So we you? made Natido's bruschetta. Mm. Okay. And we used baguette bread, mm -hmm. which is French loaf. And we fried our chicken. We shredded it, then coated it with egg and breadcrumbs. Okay. And we also fried our vegetables, bell peppers, onions, and our plantain. And here we are. All right. Voila. And also egg salsa, hmm. egg and tomato sauce. Goodness. So. In English, so it's just egg everything. Yes, oh, egg just egg so all together, oh. now call it bruschetta. Look yeah. at bruschetta. that. Look at that. So, and we use my... the crumbs to, for plating as well, yes. yeah? Just so. so, do the honors. Do okay. the honors. Okay, okay. okay. Let's see. Uh, so Where do you in, the middle? in the middle? Yeah. In the middle? In the middle. Yes. Oh. Okay. Okay. Ah. Oh, boy. So everything it's like planting, a ship journey. Everything. Yes. There we go. It's a submarine. Oh. Wow. Whoa. Mm. <laughs>
Remember, we had Janet Day too on air. Remember? <laughs> Got you there. But we have had a great time. Chef Nathaniel, you're amazing. We always appreciate you being here. And your work, honestly, you know we're just all keeping cool because when the <laughs> camera goes off, we will now lose some training. Pounce. <laughs> but uh, it's been a great show. It's Thursday already. The week is almost over, yeah? We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. Bye.